I'm usually work it all the way around. You tried spitting on it? No, but actually I'm kind of curious if it would work. Can confirm. Licking it or sticking it does help. Great. <laughs> Thing looks clean. You're right. That neon over there does look pretty clean. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? We just got. Uh... I don't even know what else to say, honestly. We just got done working. About yeah. to work some more because you know, stay hustling. GT350 just got a fresh bath last night, so it actually looks real good. But. Today we are at the new Gorilla Rockets location, which you guys have probably already seen. We actually just dropped the video today of revealing the whole entire new place and the idea behind it and stuff like that. And since the last time that you guys have seen it, it has undergone quite a bit of changes. Oh, look at Andrew. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, it is a lot different in here than the last time you guys saw. The last time it was pretty bad, but uh, the last things that really need to get done are the floors. Uh, so we're gonna do something with the floors. I'm not sure exactly what yet, just because we went and got a price on doing like laminate because laminate is pretty easy and typically pretty cheap, but unfortunately for the entire place over here to get redone in laminate, it is quite expensive. So it was like $3,500 just to get this thing done. Did you get new black handles for all this? Yeah. That looks dope. So uh, we do have to get new countertops as well because these are not going to work at all. But if you look over here, everything's still a little bit of a mess, but we've got new hinges on the cabinets. The cabinets have all been repainted. We've got new hardware on all the cabinets. We've got new doorknobs on every door. Uh, it's got like a nice little bronze color to it. The doors are all painted black. The pegboard is painted black. Well, we've got like this nice accent color of the dark gray. And uh, this is going to be hopefully where in the future all of the bikes are going to sit that are going to be for sale. All of them are going to be in here. Uh, maybe have some racks up on the walls with some merch hanging some don't lose sight stuff so you guys can actually have a place to come in person and pick it up if you don't want to go and order it online or something like that so that is what this place purpose is going to be obviously this place is not done there's quite a bit of stuff still that's got to get done but we spent a lot of time this weekend painting and getting everything prepped and ready to go it's coming out pretty well let me show you guys the bathroom in the office as well before we move over to the next two bays so in here this is going to be the office space so it's still got that ugly paint on there that we're going to be covering up here soon but you can see this one wall is done so this is what the wall is going to look like um, we got to finish that wall and obviously the other two but it's coming along really nicely and in the bathroom as well it looks pretty good if you flip on the lights obviously we've got fresh paint on the walls and then if you shut the door we've got gray back there this wall is gray as well so it's like two tones black right here gray right there gray shell so now we come over here into the shop space <laughs> and we've got the razor sitting in here on the trailer right now just for storage because we're still getting everything set up but the last time that you guys saw this place on video we had this entire concrete wall that was walled off so we couldn't exactly get into the third bay but since then they have gone ahead and cut out the blocks and they've laid a nice uh, wooden door frame around it so now we've got access between the office right there into the shop space which is where all the bikes are going to be to get worked on I've even been considering doing side-by-sides and things like that I love the lighting here, dude. It looks this great. place has these little cutouts for natural lighting to come through. And this is so much brighter than our current office spaces, but yet it's the exact same square footage. And we've got huge, huge LED lights up there, but it's just these the light natural lighting is it's so much better. Yeah, they're not even turned on. No, the lights aren't even turned on in here. But uh, anyways, it connects now to this third bay, which I'm not sure exactly what we're going to use for yet, but we'll have something that we're going to figure out. We've got the Sprinter sitting in here. Uh, a few of the initial inventory bikes, obviously. The Ducati is not going to be sold soon, though. That's going to be mine for a bit. <laughs> Nothing really has changed over here yet. We're still working on everything, but we're making progress. I love this thing. Yeah. If you did not see the video of us getting the Razor, picking it up, taking it home, taking it for the first test drive and everything, you need to go check that thing out. We actually just got it out of break-in, which is pretty cool. So we're going to go ride later this afternoon, film another video later this afternoon of exploring the land, showing you guys progress of what's been cleared through that. So that's what you guys will see for the next video. But as for today, I wanted to give you guys an update on all the progress that we've done in here. So now that we're done with that, what we're going to work on is we're going to do some mods to the two new bikes that we just went and picked up 
recently from San Antonio. If you missed that trip video, that one was an interesting one. We actually got caught in all of the George Floyd riots and everything like that in Houston, and it was pretty bad. It got pretty bad. So we ended up getting back real late that weekend. It was a big, big nightmare. But anyways, we made it back. Since getting back from that trip, I have not even gotten to ride either of these two bikes yet. It's just everything has been so busy. If you haven't been able to tell from watching this channel, the other channel, uh, music has been going crazy. We've got our third album that is going to hopefully be wrapped up here in the next few weeks. So there's just been a lot, a lot going on and I'm only one person. So I wish I could clone myself, but I can't. So anyways, we're going to get these two bikes. We're going to move them up into the showroom area and we're going to get started doing some cool stuff to these things. Finally, I've been waiting on a bunch of stuff to come in and I'm excited to show you guys. is eventually since this bike is gonna be like the staple of the place pretty much this is like the baddest motorcycle that I could pretty much name at the moment besides like an H2 so I wanted to have this set up in like in the very center of here roped off on stands just sitting real pretty in here with all the other bikes surrounding it I feel like it looked pretty cool it's definitely quite a view when you walk in so much dust oh. Want to do something to one of them while I'm working on the other one? Sure. So let me know what you want me to do. This servo eliminator goes on the R1. Okay. But you'll have to look up and see where it goes because I'm not exactly 100% sure. And then I want to see this up on the Ducati. I think you got to take off one of the side fairings, but I got all the tools and stuff here. Hey, ricer mods. What's up, dude? Yeah. Get that reservoir cover on there. So on the R1 today, what we're gonna be doing is, is, like I told you guys, whenever I first got this bike, if you remember, the only issue that the bike had is that it had a check engine light on because it has an SC project full exhaust. And the problem is that the factory exhaust on this bike and also on this bike have a servo. And basically it's an X up servo. It's got a little flap in there that uh, stays closed to boost low end torque and then will open up. Anyways, whenever you put an aftermarket exhaust on the bike, what happens is, is you lose the functionality of that servo and it kicks a check engine light on on the bike so they make these little uh servo eliminator it's called a servo buddy as you plug this into the harness where the servo normally plugs into for the exhaust and it's got a little resistor in there and it tricks the ecu into thinking hey that servo is working fine don't worry about it and the check engine light goes away so normal stuff anytime that you do an aftermarket exhaust on any newer bike you're pretty much going to need one of these little servo buddies so throw that down there out of the way while he's working on that one i've got a bunch of stuff to show you about that i got for the ducati obviously <laughs> if you're new here you don't know who I am. I really don't like leaving things stock. So I ordered quite a bit of different parts and I'll get started unboxing all these that we're gonna put on today. So nothing major, but I've got a smoked windscreen. Actually, this isn't even for this bike. Oh, here Daniel. This is for this bike actually. So smoked windscreen for that bike should definitely help out with the looks of it. Make it look a whole lot nicer. Please don't step on that and crush it. I'll try my best. Okay. <laughs> Over here, I've got the windscreen for the Ducati. Sorry. So anyways, that one is going to replace the factory one right there. Hopefully not fall. Let me see what that's going to look like. Oh man, that's going to be insane. And so after riding back from San Antonio all the way back to here, which was about a nine hour ride, <laughs> I learned pretty quickly that these Panigales are not super comfortable for riding on long distances. But unfortunately, I really, every time that I get on a bike, I really enjoy having a comfortable bike because I do believe that even though you have a sports bike you can still have a comfortable sport bike so i ordered this ducati comfort seat super super sick it's got like this alcantara feel to it perforated leather at the top and that is going to be replacing the factory seat it's got a lot thicker padding in here as well as like some gel stuff so it's super comfy we're also going to be deleting this rear passenger seat as well as these passenger pegs because there is no way in hell i will ever have a passenger on this bike this one is not the bike to play around with and have a passenger on <laughs> i've also got some bar ends here for it which are going to be a pretty nice little touch and this is where it starts getting real cool so i've got a lot of carbon fiber that i ordered for the bike as well this is a replacement rear fender the rear fender stock is just a black ABS plastic, but I figured with the nice touch of the carbon on the exhaust right here and a few other carbon pieces that I'm about to show you guys, this thing would look really, really nice. So carbon fiber rear fender here. I also got a carbon fiber gas tank cover. So this is the little cover that goes right here and we're gonna replace that one with the carbon fiber one. Yeah, this thing is about to go through a complete transformation as far as looks go, that's crazy. I also ordered a carbon fiber front fender as well. And just to go even more extra, I went ahead and got 
replacement carbon fiber heel guards right here just to give that extra touch get rid of a little bit more of that silver and get some more carbon up there so after we're done with the stuff that we're planning on doing today to this bike it is probably going to be the sickest ducati that has been on youtube well maybe not quite there almost over here we've got our rear fairing delete or our rear seat delete whatever instead of having the fairing cut right here and having this big rear seat there this is actually going to replace it and it's just going to have the fairing and a tiny little seat that i'm going to show you guys here in a second and it keeps going we're not done yet <laughs> in this box i'm not going to do this today probably but at some point well i might do it today i don't know a throttle spacer one of the biggest complaints about these ducatis is that they've got like this dead period of throttle and i'll show you guys so right if you feel that, that little dead slack period, what happens is whenever you grab it and get to start going, there's like a little bit of slack and it doesn't feel exactly perfect. And I'm a real big perfectionist. So they've got these throttle spacers that go right there. That's gonna help out a lot with cleaning that up. Also, they've got these Ducati reservoir covers that are neat, but not exactly my taste. So I went and got some new ones that are a little bit nicer looking. So we're gonna replace these with these nice newer white ones. And I think they look a lot better. Let's get these set up. Oh, and I threw it down there. There we go. That looks a whole lot better. I've also got, but I'm not gonna be doing it today because I didn't get my stand in in time. I've got some oil changes for the two bikes here for the R1 and also for the Ducati. Let me grab all this, set it over there too. Anyway, the last mod that we're gonna be doing to the Ducati today is this beautiful, beautiful tank protector. So here in the very center, we're gonna be putting yet another carbon fiber piece to protect the tank. You can probably maybe see on the camera, there's already been a little bit of rubbing going on there from the ride back, probably if I had to guess. And this tank protector essentially protects the gas tank paint from getting scratched up from jacket zippers whenever you're leaning over it or anything like that. So it's just a nice little added bit of protection for the paint. How this going? I really hate, I gotta get this piece off, but they put plastic screw things in there and honestly they're just i don't know why people still use them because they never come out i gotta get underneath this at the moment because the servo is actually up here and it runs cables down to the flap in the exhaust so you just pull out the entire thing check that out look okay. at the abs block that's pretty neat i gotta get underneath here and then from there it's very simple i'm just being careful not to break anything i guess i'll dive right into this bike i don't even know where it's at on this one yeah here it is i knew it was under the side somewhere let's take off our rear seat there should be i believe one two let me reference this other one to see so those actually stay on there okay okay so there's four bolts underneath and i believe this just slides off get in there this is so nerve-wracking this is essentially the equivalent to working on a ferrari if you were working on cars so doing anything with this bike definitely has me nervous all the time. I guess this one you do have to take the two bolts off of the top. It should slip very carefully off of the back. Now that we got this piece removed off of the back, I can take our delete piece here and this one is going to slide over just like so. And it's gonna hook in the back, back there, like that. All right, and now our little piece here, I believe slides right up into the middle. And there we go. Just like that, that is our new tailpiece installed. It looks so weird because that's like really super clean paint. This is super dusty paint, so it looks kind of dumb, but whatever. All right, now the seat is gonna be our next thing that we're gonna do. Super simple to replace as well. We're just gonna get these two bolts underneath the seat loosened up and our seat should come off real quick and easy. Just like that and the seat slides forward, slide it up into the front middle, tuck it back down into place back here. We are two mods deep and this thing already is starting to look different. Next up, we're gonna get our carbon fiber heel guards down here. I'm gonna tighten this thing down. <laughs> oh man. Next up, we need to remove our, for some reason, reverse mounted passenger pegs. I don't even know if I'm gonna be able to get in there with a drill and I've left all my sockets at home. Or not my sockets, my uh, ratchets. Yeah, I don't have a ratchet here and we're not gonna be able to get in there with the drill, so that kind of sucks. It's gonna stay on there for a little bit. Next up, because I know it's gonna be super simple, I'm gonna do our carbon fiber gas tank protector up top. Perfect. Wow, check this out. The battery is right here. Oh, that's interesting. The rectifier regulator is right here. The fuses are right here. Underneath the uh, gas tank cover. 
That's why this bike doesn't have, you remember you were like, why does that thing have to keep fueling up? We we're like talking about miles per gallon. The tank is literally only right here. Wow, this is rather interesting. All right, slide our new one down into place and it's got these little rubber push pins that you've got to push down. Holy crap, bro. This is about to be a mean bike. Yep, that's it. The end of this video. We've got to have a sequence. Next up, since we don't have any microfibers here, my shirt is super soft. By the way, this shirt's super soft because you got it from it's just a six.com slash shop. There's no more shopping. I know, I was just now sitting there resting myself in my head. I was like, damn it, I messed it up. <laughs> Anyways, my shirt's soft. You can get one just like it at it's just a six.com. It doesn't have a slash shop on it. Anyways, let me wipe this clean. Now let me take my Ducati tank pad out. Oh, look at them. They was thinking. Yeah, if you can tell the difference in build quality of the two bikes, look at how far Daniel's gotten on doing stuff and look at how far this is. Let's okay, so do the servo on that one. We'll see what, how hard it is. It's right underneath. I already looked it up actually. It's pretty simple. Whenever you- uh, I thought this one would be simple too, but- It's right. Like you, you literally just can pop this fairing piece at the bottom off and it's right there. Let it dry for a second. And then Daniel, I'm really need your help for a second. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, boy. Daniel got the first plastic piece. <laughs> Finally, it's this big piece right here. You remove this whole thing. I gotta center this. I need help. So I'll peel it the rest of the way up. Yep, that actually went real well. And I am definitely seeing everything take shape now. It's starting to look really good. I'm kind of upset because I literally just realized that I do not know if I own <laughs> a Torx as small as what works on this windscreen it is a tiny tiny torx and i don't think i have one it's like a t5 how's this going Let's oh you see. already got it plugged in yep <laughs> I wish the Ducati's windscreen was this easy to, <laughs> to replace. Literally plastic screws. Yeah, that's what these are. Next up, I'm gonna work on the front fender of this thing, getting it replaced with the carbon fiber one. See, this is gonna be long enough. Sweet. All right, now the front fender is loose, and now there is just one little thing holding it up up there. It is probably gonna be virtually impossible to see, but I'm loosening a nut underneath this front fender down here that holds the brake lines to the front fender. I should be able to slip this thing forward. Perfect, Let's check that out. There is our factory front fender and grab our carbon one and do the exact same thing, but backwards and get it reinstalled. The part that I was removing a second ago that I told you guys you probably couldn't see, I'm, uh, I'm reinstalling that. So <laughs> now we'll take our new hardware and we can tighten down our new front fender. Ooh, this thing's getting clean. Pretty sure that this is like a, a shower cap, but for the seat. I actually might just go real quick and boobop down the road and go grab a, uh, a ratchet. I think all I need is a 3 8 ratchet. Five minutes later. I'm an R1. Oh my God. Be the bike. <laughs> so Daniel took off everything because apparently it's a lot more difficult to get this windscreen replaced. And I thought you actually have to take off this entire alien looking nose fairing off of them to be able to get to it. So underneath it, oh, nice. All of that just to slide it out like that. Well, you already took the screws out hmm. that are holding it in. So this part, you've got to get these little things pushed out of here and then pressing them into the new one. You can usually work it all the way around. Have you tried spitting on it? No, but actually I'm kind of curious if it would work. Anyways, I ran down the road real quick to the shop shop from the other channel. If you're not subscribed to the It's Just a Six channel, you can click above and go check it out. But anyways, I'm going to try to get everything off of this. And confirm, licking it. It does help. Great, <laughs> thank you for the confirmation. All right, passenger pegs removed on one side. I have a feeling that this one's gonna prove to be pretty difficult. Oh, no it's not. Oh, somebody was so sweet. Oh yes, baby. I was super worried about how to get this front one out, but it looks like whoever put these passenger pegs on already came into that problem. I was like, you know, you know what? I'm not gonna put that other bolt in. Thank the Lord they did not. That would have been probably the biggest pain in the ass ever, so. All righty, now it is starting to really take shape and look like a freaking race bike from hell. Well, didn't you get it from San Antonio? <laughs> All right, most of these bolts in the back are removed. It seems like I got one more hanging on somewhere. Ah, there you are, buddy. Factory nasty one out of the way. New carbon fiber one. Let's slide it down in place. I will say I'm genuinely impressed with the fitment of this carbon. Most carbon is spotty. Fitment is spotty. This fitment is absolutely identical to OEM, which is, I guess, makes sense because it is made by the OEM company. So definitely looking good back there. It's funny because this is 
like one of the only things for some reason on this entire bike so far that I've installed that completely voids the warranty. It's a throttle spacer. So it doesn't look like it because you haven't ridden it, but this little bit right here yeah. of slack is so horrible because you get on it getting ready to take off and you've got no throttle feel for actually a good bit. Mm -hmm. Like it, I don't know why it doesn't seem like that much, but it's actually about right here until it actually starts going. So that voids the warranty apparently so those two are out now with the special Bang. bit bless you swap cameras real quick i want to show you guys up close what we're doing here so pull that off we got a big spacer and a small spacer and apparently i see what it's got to do it's just hard to there we go no better yep now there is one on the bottom too this one looks like it's a whole lot easier to get to though because there's no throttle tube looks pretty solid there we go better no slack at all no. straight ready to go well i think since i don't have a bit to be able to take this windscreen off i think that is just about all that i'm going to do for today i'm going to save the bar ends and the grips for probably the same time that we do the windscreen so it's a little bit more transformation we've also got a clear clutch cover coming for this thing which is going to be absolutely sick be able to see the clutch spinning around in there and everything so it's going to be nice colorized so i'll show you all when that comes in <laughs> 